Right guys, we're here today to take a look at how you would get a medium sized pit bike to a small dirt bike of some kind on the back of a regular car. Rather than try to put your seats down and put a petrol machine with a hot exhaust into the back of your car after a day's use, this is going to be how you carry your pit bike on the back of an actual car. So we're going to use a contraption like this. There's one other part for it which is the main plate. We're actually installing that onto the tow bar at the minute. And I thought I'd show you. This was made from a company called Tag Z or Tag Z if you're in the States. Same thing. So these are the wheel racks. This would be for the front. This is for the back. It's extendable. It can move along. And this is a back support brace where you would use your ratchet straps through the tie-in loop at the top, keep it all together. Now we're busy putting the plate on the back of the car and I realised I could make a useful video out of this for people. So pit bikes are very common from like 70cc all the way up to like 110. I think that's the size that's actually for this but you'll see we got another bike out here and this bike's a 140cc with a big wheel upgrade, so we're going to see if that will even fit on it as well. Right, so we'll get out to the piece that's on the car, we'll take a look at it and see how it's installed, and I'll show you how simple drop and fit this mechanism is, and we'll try both this small wheel project bike and the large wheel bike that's just about completed, and see how they fit. And also, I'll get the other part as well, there's an extension piece you can get. Now I've added a big silly wing on the back of my car and that seems to get in the way of the handlebars with the other bike. They're about the same height. So I ordered the extension. We might not need it, but I'll show you the piece anyway when it comes to it. So let's get to the car. Right, excuse the noise of the traffic people, but this is my car and you'll see the big wing. And yeah, go on. Be the first one to ever point out this is not a Japanese car, but it's got a wing on the back of it. That would make you a real clever person. Not only that, I'll point out for you, that's a front-wheel drive car, and it's got a wing. Get it? <laughs> right, so here's the back plate. Right, here's the plate. It's attached on your normal tow bar with just the two bolts. Now, it's got to be like the hitch type, not the swan neck type. So it's just got the two holes where you install the tow bar ball. So you take the tow bar ball off and you slot this plate on, you put your ball on and your bolts through it and tighten it up. So that's your first part of getting that done and that's your main plate on. Next we'll show you how the brackets get installed. Right guys, so I'm gonna show you how easy the parts are installed again. Excuse any traffic that comes by, but this is your front part just instantly slots down inside. There's your back part. It's exactly the same, slots straight down inside. Now there is a bolt here that keeps this rod in place. And that's your tie bar for when you're putting your ratchet straps on. Now this could be kept in one piece. You don't have to be dismantling this. That's only been dismantled for packaging, that doesn't have to come back together or back apart again. And as you see, this part here extends out. Now the traffic is messing with us today, people. But that's how it looks on the car. From right on side of it, you can see it doesn't stick out. Now on this side, it's pretty much in line with the tyre, okay? So it, is, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, but we're going to find out today if the big wheel version pit bike is going to fit inside it or if we have to get the other project bike with the smaller wheels. Now I have noticed that back here there's still room for manoeuvre, there's still some extra space back here and if need be you could maybe grind a little bit out of this just to get that little half inch extra if needed. I'm going to advise that. But we'll need to test it first and find out. Okay guys, so what I'm noticing here is we're coming up to the bolt is running into the metalwork and not allowing this to come back as far as it should even allow. So the only thing I'm really left with is possibly grinding a little bit off the head of the bolt. 
which I'm sure could probably compromise safety a bit, but I don't think the pressure pushing from this side back would be enough to shear the head off the bolt, not at all. But yeah, so that's the first thing we've run into. I'll maybe see if giving it a good old fashioned wallop will extend it to there. Okay guys, so you might be able to tell with a bit of mud there, a little bit of a donkey kick. Just latched it that bit further along. So by the look of it, I don't know if it's going to fit, but maybe with the suspension compressed, the big wheels might go in. So let's get set up and give it a check. Right, so we've got the big wheel on there. Now the big wheels can still fit in there and that could be ratcheted down, no problem. But the issue we're getting into here is now the foot peg bar is running into the actual bar and even if I put the spacer on this thing's on the end of the spacer so this will always be at the bike so considering all pit bikes have pegs in the same place pretty much some go a little bit higher some sweep up some come out straight but they all come out at the same place the bolt holes are all the same on all frames so this to be sold to me specifically for a pit bike when it runs into that bar, no, I'm not seeing it now. When I bought this, I did even let them know I would be putting it in a video at some point. And to be honest with you, that is absolutely terrible design. Terrible design. Look how close it is to the engine. That's the bike not even standing up straight yet. It won't go any further because it's colliding into the pole. There's no place you can move that pole and that pole's not adjustable along the way. That's permanently in that area unless you remove the pole. I ain't removing that pole for safety reasons, so... Hmm... I don't know what to tell you guys, but it is an awesome adjustable rack. Especially for bikes any smaller than this, but... To be colliding into the pole like that is a no-no. Suppose. If it was at a slant the way it is, I mean it's tipping and leaning out the way. That wouldn't be good to be ratchet strapping it down already off balance, I suppose. But as in it clearing the big wing on the back, clears it perfectly. The spacer, I didn't actually need the spacer whatsoever, but I did get the spacer separately, so if you're putting on a flat back car, you can still take it. But from the way it sits just now, hmm, it's going to have to be wonky, but strapped in wonky, but... At a push, I would say it would fit. Not absolutely 100% secure and not rubbing into things and not the way it was designed to be, having things pressed up against it like that, but it's not really going to do any damage. At most, it might scratch the paint off the pole, but nobody cares about the rack. So, what you did? Yeah, I would say... Like it's got good clearance off of the ground. Good clearance. It's just sitting there. It's not even got ratchet straps, so it is quite sunk in. And to be honest with you, it probably is doable to take it like that. Just extra ratchet straps. Alright guys, my split second solution is I'm probably going to end up taking this part off and sticking it in the vise and just giving a slight bend to the pole out the way so the bottom half stays straight and is always connecting perfectly in what it's supposed to be. And then this is just lean forward a bit and gives me that little bit of space. Still structurally sound, still bolted in. It's not gonna be bent at a 90 degree angle or nothing like that, so it's just gonna have a slight bend in it. Probably not in one place, probably work it in an arc so that it's along its whole length rather than in one place. But yeah, I still think it's gonna be fine and usable, absolutely just going to take a bit of coercion right guys so just a quick recap right it's going to fit pretty much any pit bike i was being a bit over dramatic when i realized it was banging into the bar and it felt like it was at more of an angle but to be honest with you it just means when i tighten it up it's going to be crammed against the bar pretty much which i'm just more than happy about it just gives me security but the, the piece itself, absolutely brilliant, fully adjustable for size, so you could have a much smaller sized bike that you could put in this. It doesn't, the wheelbase from the front, the middle of the front wheel to the middle of the back wheel can be bigger or smaller, so different size bikes will fit. Excellent contraption, and when I get to the other part, I'll even add that in the end of the video just to show you. So cars, 
cars that have flat backs like straight up to the back window and stuff the handlebars might run into there that's what the space is really for but when i was trial fitting it with the smaller bike it was colliding with my wing so i ordered the spacer and didn't even bother checking with the much bigger bike which doesn't look all that much bigger because it's tipped on its side a bit but it's got the big wheel upgrade didn't think that was going to fit so it does extend it it does take a big wheel upgrade it could be slightly modified on the end to get an extra inch or two if maybe you had a super extended swing arm on the back of your pit, pit bike so it still would fit so overall i'm happy with it i will include a little clip of the spacer at the end to show it can be done can be done on pretty much any family car and with the spacer included could even be done in an estate with like a pure big glass window going up the back so you don't have to worry about the handlebars colliding so this is an absolute win for me i'll leave links in the description of where i got it from it was drifting dunes on ebay and i'll leave you a link in the description for exactly what i bought including the spacer and damn i'm telling you this is very very handy I've been known for sticking petrol contraptions in the back of my car. And that's okay to get somewhere or transport it. But when you've had a bit of a ride somewhere and it's time to come home or the weather forces you to not be there, you pretty much won't be there again for the rest of the day. You've got no other option but to drive home. And that's not safe with a red hot exhaust in the back of a car with a bike laying on its side. or So yeah, normally we'd have to wait ages for it to cool down. And then be transporting it back. But that's just because we've got a humdinger car. I doubt many people's going to be sticking petrol contraptions in their car in the first place. That's why you need this. Cheap as chips. Put it this way. It would probably cost you the same to get a petrol stain out your interior of your car than it would be to pay for this. So I'd much rather have this. Tag Z. UK. British made. I think it's from Wales actually. <laughs> But I'll leave all the information in the description and you can check that stuff out. Bye for now guys. Right guys, I just wanted to show you this was the... I don't want to tear it open just now, but it's basically the same Tag Z fitment. It's got just two ends the same that goes on to your tow bar. It's the same on that side as it is on this side. And basically you just connect this end onto your tow bar and you connect your faceplate onto this end. And then you rack onto this end and that way the handlebars wouldn't collide into the back of like a high back to stay a straight backed car so that's the extra piece that i thought i would have needed don't actually need but now you know what it's for and if you plan on getting one of these and you do have an estate that has a high back on it then you know exactly what part you need to get this was a 170 millimeter spacer but again i'll leave all of the links in the description and you'll be able to have a look at this stuff and see if it's for you quality is high the welds are high i was a bit miffed about where the support bar was but it is what it is and it isn't really a big problem nothing i can't fix or make work for myself so yeah, I'm overall very happy for the price it would take to remove liquid petrol out your interior. Well, you have this that would make it never possible to happen. Right, thanks a lot guys, and this gets an absolute thumbs up from me.